This lesson is about lines of best fit using the two means method. So as it says here, it provides a more accurate line of best fit than the single mean method. Reminder, the single mean method was just find the average of your data and then sort of guess your way to where the line of best fit should be. Okay, so this method will eliminate that guesswork with choosing the direction or the gradient of the line of best fit. Some things that we need to remember for this lesson is how to find slope rise of a run or the difference between the y coordinates of a point of the two points divided by the difference in the x coordinates and our equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c so in this example we've got some data from our students who have asked them how many hours they studied for an exam and recorded their exam score for the two means method the first thing we need to do is ensure that this is in ascending order according to the independent variable x okay so i look through my x data and i see is this in order no it's not this score at the end needs to be over here now i can't just rearrange the top row because these are um, that if I just rearrange the top row, I'd have a three in here and it'd mean that the person that studied for three hours got 85% instead of the 76% that they actually did. So it means that this 76 needs to come along with it and have a place in my table alongside the, the three hours studied. So when I rearrange, I'm rearranging point by point. And now that I've got them in ascending order, I can divide the table into two sections, into upper and lower. So I'll divide it pretty much there. And I'll find for the lower half, the mean hours. And the mean exam score. Well, mean score. And then we'll do the same thing for the upper half. So just adding, so for mean hours, adding those three together and dividing by three. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and draw a scatter plot, plotting that information on the graph and also putting my lower and my, yeah, my lower and my upper mean on the graph. So looking at the exam results, the black dots, I can see a positive relationship. So the more hours we study, the higher score we should get. I'll now plot the lower and upper means on here. So the lower mean is 1.66 and 66, so about here. And the upper mean is 6 and 89. So between those two points is where I'll draw, draw my line of best fit. And there's absolutely no guesswork at all because there's just two points to draw between. Okay, you'll be able to do it better with a ruler, I'm not writing on a computer screen. But that would be my line of best fit between hours studied and exam results. Okay, and then I could realistically probably use that line of best fit to answer these questions like what grade would a student who study for one hour expect? Well, I'd read up off this graph and, and grab it off there. Okay, we want to be a bit more sophisticated than that. We're going to find the equation of the line of best fit. of the form y equals mx plus c. Remember m is the gradient, so the slope of the line, and c is the y-axis intercept. So where does it, what's this point here, without just reading it off the graph? You can read it off the graph if you really get stuck. All right, so first step is to find the gradient. So I'll find m first. I've got a formula for m, y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. 
this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. I'll just go ahead and substitute these points in. So my difference in my y's divided by my difference in my x's. I'll get a gradient or slope of 5.16. What's the meaning of 5.16? It means that every time I, so say I'm at a point here, if I increase x by 1, it means I increase y by 5.16. In other words, if you study for another hour, you'll get another 5.16% on your exam. Okay, so I've found M, need to also find C. So again, if you're really struggling, you can just read it off there and say, oh, it's about 57, something like that, 57.5. Okay, but we, we're in year 12, want to be a bit more sophisticated. So to find C, we're going to substitute the gradient of 5.16 and I'll just choose one of these red points I'll choose the one with less decimals in it substitute that into y equals mx plus c and by doing that I should be able to solve for c so this is my x value my y value so 89 is my y value 5.16 times my x value of 6 plus c I can rearrange this for C. And end up with 58 as my C value. That means my equation, y equals mx plus C, is 5.16x plus 58. Okay, is the equation of the line of best fit. So hopefully what you've realized here is we actually didn't need to graph it at all. It's good to graph it to be able to check our answers reasonable, but we could have just found the mean of the lower and upper and done this working on the right hand side. All right, part C, what grade would you expect a student to get who studied for one hour? So in part C, we're going to sub in x equals one and find y. So in that equation, I'll replace x with 1, and we'll end up with 63.16%. So if you study for one hour, you get 63.16% on the exam. Must be a pretty easy exam. For part D, how many hours would you need to study to obtain an exam score of 95%? Our exam score is our y value, so I'd sub in y equals 95 and 95 is 5.16 x plus 58 should be able to solve that on your own and get 7.17 hours and finally part e can this model be used to predict the grade of a student who studies for 100 hours well, if I continue this across to 100, I'll probably get some strange result for their exam. That this would continue up as well, and they'd end up getting like 400% or something ridiculous like that. So what we'd say in our answer to part E is something along the lines of no. The relationship is only true for certain x values. Okay, and it can't be extrapolated indefinitely. Extrapolated, we can't go outside the data. Can't say what would happen if you studied for 2,000 hours. Alright, from here, have a go at those questions.